AIDS is a fact of life in Thompson Penn, an inner city community on the outskirts of Kingston. Here, some of Jamaica's poorest people are living with AIDS and the fear and social stigma that always seem to travel with it. Ida Northover, known as Miss Jean, has lived in this community for 59 years. And a few years ago, she volunteered to become the local representative for Jamaica's National AIDS Program. I play all of the roles in this community. I'm the lawyer, I'm the doctor, I'm the MP, I'm the counselor, I do everything. Everybody come to me just about everything. Today, an estimated 27,000 people are living with AIDS in Jamaica. Miss Jean has made it her job to look after those in her community, people like LaSalle Gray. <laughs> you got your medication. So you got to take them now. I had this stick to her just a while ago. Mm -hmm. When AIDS first appeared in Jamaica in 1982, it was a death sentence. Few medications existed, and those that did, the poor couldn't afford. You see, those times, persons couldn't buy their medication. So people get real sick. People get sores. Huh? So people just have that thing that's a boy from your from your AIDS, you go dead. Most people lived less than a year after diagnosis, and suicide was a common response. And the first time the doctor spoke to me, I was thinking about suicide. You know, so, you know, as life goes on and, you know, start to go to my group meeting and so forth and see people and so forth, I get back to myself. Welcome to our monthly support group, and the topic today is about adherence. The national program has set up support groups like this one to help people cope with the daily challenges of living with AIDS. And, you know, glad to have, have you know, people come in and, 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 and talk to you and cheer you up and let me know that life goes on and so forth. And when you get them into a group of persons who are HIV positive and they see that they are well, they are looking well, they can be well, they can be productive and they continue to live a normal life. This helps them psychologically. Winsome Keen Dawes, who runs the local AIDS program here, says the biggest change came five years ago when the government began providing free drugs to everyone with the virus. The fact that they now have the medication free of cost, but they can see that they're feeling much better, they're looking, especially looking much better. Nobody can suspect that that person looks like an HIV person. Here, being publicly identified with AIDS often leads to social isolation and even violence. When Nikon Brown was first diagnosed with HIV, he was afraid to leave his house. He was not allowed to come out because the risk of being killed, total social rejection. We were happy that they tolerated him in the house because we've had other occasions where people would want to get rid of them by lighting the place of fire or some of or threatening to kill them. At first, it's when me here saying, if me HIV positive, me get free, you know, so me not go near near him because he's infected. So I start to explain to them, tell them what HIV is all about. And in something way, if the person hold your hand, sit down where you, you can't catch it that way. You just tell them, sex-wise, blood, otherwise you no can't catch it. Nikon is, has gone from being secluded in a room to now the whole community is protecting him. Miss Jean's efforts have changed the lives of people with HIV in Thompson Penn, which today has become a haven of tolerance in a still turbulent sea of stigma and discrimination. This has a ripple effect. You may start with a little, a little ripple and it becomes a wave. That's all the thing. And that is the whole concept, really, because we start in just one little ass, one is just Nikon's house. And I think we have now covered Thompson Penn and, and have gone beyond to the other adjoining communities. My art goes out really, 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 really to these people. All the communities, inner city communities, are not as successful because it's not everywhere we can find a gene. Why worry when you can pray? For World Focus, I'm Lisa Biajati in Kingston, Jamaica. Don't be like Opal Tama. Why worry, worry, worry? Why worry, worry, worry?
when you can bring why worry when you can pray brother just call to lord jesus he will lead the way oh don't be like the